Welcome to the video. These, I was like low-key excited about. I don't know if that's in focus, but these are some stickers that I ordered. I have about 50 of these left. I'm giving them away. Y'all know where to reach me, Instagram, email, message. Just reach me if you want one, some, I'll get it to you. It's gonna be take two on Studio Portrait Work Tips. Action. Take two on Studio Portrait Work Tips. I've been spending most of my life living in gangsters back then. How to bring the best out of your portrait experience. These are a few of my go-to tips for studio portrait work. Let's get it. Portrait photography is what I feel like I specialize and enjoy the most. You get the opportunity to exhibit whatever emotion that you're looking to convey out of a person, and that alone is a challenge. In this video, I'm just gonna give y'all some quick and simple tips. This is literally how I approach each and every studio, indoor, portrait, photography, shoot. Y'all know what I mean. Number one, which is probably the most important, what are we looking to convey? What are we doing? What's the idea of the shoot? What's the theme? What color background are we gonna use and why? Do we have a shot list of the things that we're looking to capture or are we just winging it? These are some of the things you have to ask yourself. Just prepare yourself like you would prepare yourself for anything else in a day. Number two, how are we gonna light the set? Unlike being outdoors, in studio scenarios, you have complete control over the lighting. I know lighting can come off as like one of the most intimidating things, especially when I first started out. It just simply takes some getting used to. But start off by choosing your light source. What are you gonna use? Are you gonna use continuous light, some LED lights? Are you gonna use a flash? Are you gonna use a speed light? Are you gonna use a strobe? What are you gonna use to light your subjects? After you decide what you're gonna use, take lighting your subject one light at a time. If you're using more than one light, take it one light at a time. This will make it a whole lot easier, trust me. Third, shoot at a higher f-stop. Why, right? A higher f-stop is gonna give your image a more fuller feeling image. It's gonna catch more detail, and being that this is a portrait session, so it's gonna be closer up, catching more detail in the subject is important. Unless, for creative purposes, you're gonna use a shallow depth of field, I would shoot at a higher f-stop. I usually like to start between 6.3 to 8, and then I'll adjust accordingly. Let me give you guys an example. As y'all can see, we have our studio session set up. I'm shooting with the lovely JoJo, and if you pay attention to both of these photos, you'll be able to see the difference. I'll leave the settings on the screen. Boom. Okay, there's no wrong or right way. It's all about preference. I'm gonna pull up these two images so we can see the difference that aperture f-stop makes on your actual photo. Now these are two photos side by side. The first one is at f8, the second one is at f2.8. And then you can see the second one gives us a shallow depth of fill, even in this studio session, around the eyes, the hair, the ears. Even in this chain right here, you can see the difference between the images. Like we have more detail on the first image and then the second image, um, we're like losing detail and getting a shallow depth of fill around the ears and the hair, even on this chain here over here. Now I wanna pull up um, both of these images in Photoshop so I can zoom in and give you guys a better example. Now these are both of the image once, images once again and this is at 2.8 and you can see even this eye here is more in focus than that eye. That eye is a little blurry and once again the air, the top of the hair, the chain, all this stuff is like falling out of focus because we're shooting at a shallow depth of field at 2.8. Now in f8 we don't necessarily have that problem. F8 and above usually is when you bring more into focus into your images so you can see the air, the hair, all that stuff is in focus. And for me, once again, it's all about preference. For me, this is just my approach to portrait photography, just getting more in focus and have a fuller feeling image. Four, focus on the eye. The eyes never lie. The eyes are like the jewels in the photograph. They help captivate, they help bring people in. If you can get the eye intact, sharp focus, then I feel like everything else just falls into place. Focus on the eye. Five, separate your subject from the background. I talked about this in a previous video, and like I said, there's several ways to do this, but now I wanna show you guys an example. Usually, when I'm doing a studio, uh, a portrait session, I shoot at a higher f-stop, so I can't use shallow depth of field to separate my subjects from the background, right? So I use lighting 
to separate my subjects for, from the background. And I'm gonna give you guys an example. All right, so this technique is gonna require two lights, a key light and a fill light. Our key light, which is our main light source, which is right here, that's the light that's gonna light our subject. And we create separation with our fill light, which is over here. That light is gonna light the back of her head and her shoulder, helping create separation between her and the background. Okay, so let's pull up both of these images. This first image is with the fill light and the second image is gonna be without the fill light. Now, so you guys can see the difference. This first image has the fill light with the red color gel, so just, it's just giving her hair some red color and it's helped separating her from the background. And with the gel, I just decided to add it to give it another level of interest. But the second photo you can see without it, for me, it just feels a little flat without the fill light. Once again, there's no right or wrong, it's all about preference, but for me, this first image with the fill light, it just gives it another level of interest for me. Now, let me bring up another example. I think this would be a better example. Same technique, same setup. We have our fill light, and you can see it's hitting the back of her head and her shoulder, just helping separate her from the black background. This is a, a good technique, a good go-to technique for me whenever I'm doing some portrait work. I use this technique a lot in my portrait sessions. I like it. Six, highlight the features. I feel like I said this also in one of my previous videos. Portrait photography tends to be a bit personable because you're closer to the subject. Whether it's reflecting the emotion, whether it's selling a product, we wanna highlight and convince the viewer of the photo. Keeping in mind the features, hand placement, the eyes, like I said before, just highlighting all the features that's in the photo. Number seven, have fun. Once you get everything sorted and out the way, now it's time to create. This is the fun part. Have fun, be engaging, don't be a stiff. I hate working with people that are stiffs. This is the part where you're creating. Just have fun and create an experience. That's what people remember, the experience. Don't be a stiff. In conclusion, this is like my personal approach to portrait photography. These are just some guidelines that help me along the line of creating. Let me know if these were helpful in any way. And if you're a newcomer, consider subscribing, like, comment, leave me your feedback. And like always, I will see you guys at the next video.